بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله العلی العظیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی الله على سیدنا و نبینا ابی القاسم المصطفى محمد و آله الطیبین الطاهرین لا سیما بقیت الله فی الارضین اجل الله تعالی فرجه الشریف و جعلنا من اعوانه و انصاره اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم الحمد لله we have توفيق to start our third series on Islamic mysticism as you remember we started first with introduction to Islamic mysticism by Ayatollah Mutahari rahmatullah alayh in 14 sessions we discussed that book then we started nine section of al-isharat wa tanbihat by ibn sina and the commentary by khadi nasiruddin tusi rahmatullah alayh which was on maqamatul arifin stations of the mystics and alhamdulillah we finished that last week in 27 lectures as we promised in the beginning, we said, inshallah, we will try to have three series. So this is the third series. And the book that we are going to study is called Lubbul Lubab, the kernel of the kernels. Lub is the core of something. Imagine if you have a for example, walnut or almond. What is there is first you have a shell and then you have the core. That is what is eatable, the nut, nut itself or almond itself that we can eat. Of course, even that has a peel and then you have the nut itself. And ulama say that even that knot can uh, be squeezed and from that we can extract oil, oil of almond, oil of walnut. That's then the, you know, essence of it. That's the core of the core. If you get to that oil of almond. So many things are like this, that you have to go through different uh, stages of uh, penetration so that you get to the very core and very essence, uh, whether it be knowledge, whether it be uh, ibadah, spirituality, etc. So this book is Lubbul Lubab, and it is an essay on Seyr Suluk, on a spiritual journey or wayfaring. The story behind this book is explained by Ayatollah Tehrani, Sayyid Muhammad Hussein Husseini Tehrani, in the introduction to the book. Towards the end of the introduction, he says that some time ago, I was asked to write something for a collection of different you know essays that was supposed to be prepared for the anniversary of martyrdom of Ayatollah Mutahari and because he was very close friend of Ayatollah Mutahari and he explains himself you know uh, about how much you know they were close to each other so 
he first saw that it's very difficult because he was you know very busy and uh, was thinking that it might not be possible so initially he didn't accept but then they referred again and then he says روح آن صدیق گرامی مدد نمود The soul of that dear friend, meaning Ayatollah Mutahari, helped me and I was able to write this uh, essay and add an introduction to that essay. So this is end of the introduction. And he says, because of the happiness of the soul of Ayatollah Mutahari, I am offering this to the Taliban Haq, seekers of the truth, wa puyandegan subul salam, those who are looking for the ways of peace. You know, Quran says that Yahdi bihillahu man taba ridwanahu subul salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the Quran guides those who are after his pleasure, subul salam, the ways of peace. وَيُخْرَجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ And would take them from darkness to light. وَيَحْدِيهِمْ إِلَى صِرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ And guide them to the right path. So Subul as salam that in some lectures we have explained what, what are ways of peace and what's the difference between this and Sirat al-Mustaqim. So he says those who are seekers of the truth and those who follow the ways of peace and the path of haqiqat, reality or truth, I am offering this for them. And then he says, this is very important and for whole uh, series we need to remember this. What is the relation between this book and Allah Metabatabai? He says, Asle in Resale. The origin of this essay, Os va moche. اولین دوره از درس های اخلاقی و عرفانی است که حضرت استاد گرامی ما علام تبا تبایی روحی فدا در سالهای 1368 و 69 هجری قمریه در حوزه مقدسه علمیه قم برای بعضی از طلاب Bayan Farmude. He says, so the origin of this essay is the core of the very first series of lectures by Allah Metabatabai on Akhlaq and Irfan. So Allah had different series. Over years, the very first series that he had for some talabe in Hose el Qom, in Islamic seminars of Qom, is what Ayatollah Tehrani attended, took notes, put them together, compiled them, and explained, and became this essay. And it is interesting. The way he mentions Allame, although he himself is a you know, mujtahid, uh, when he wrote this, he was very respected uh, and already very established. He says, Hazrat Ustad Girami Ma, his eminence, our dear teacher, Allame Taba Tabahi. Ruhi Feda, may I be his ransom, may my soul be his ransom. Actually, Ayatollah Mutahari also used to say the same. Even in his books, you know, when he was referring to Allah, many times he was saying, Ruhi Feda. This is the love that existed, this is the respect that they had for the uh, teacher, and what, you know, a special. Uh, uh, caliber they saw in Allah Metabatabai. So he says, uh, Our dear teacher, His Eminence, Allah Metabatabai, may my soul be his ransom. In the years 
1368 and 1369 lunar calendar so it's about 80 years ago almost uh, gave in Qom or some maybe 70 years ago and he says I put them together and he says that's, that's also very interesting uh, it shows how much he himself was benefiting from this and attached to it. He said, Qiraat wa murur an ra dar auqat qabz o kudurat o khastegi mujeb tanvir ruh wa taltif jan khud midanestam. Whenever I was feeling very, you know, sad. There was a kind of problem, tiredness, you know, spiritually being tired or you know, challenged, exhausted. I used to go back to my notes and read them, and it was causing tanvir ruh. It was enlightening, illuminating my soul, and taltif jan, and softening my soul. So this was how much he was himself benefiting from these notes and now he says I revised it one more time and added something and offer the reward to the soul of Ayatollah Mutahari and then he ends with uh, some dua so this is not written by Allah Metabatabai as such it is written by Ayatollah Tehrani based on the teachings of Allah Metabatabai. In Hose we have this practice that students write notes from the lectures of their teacher and they put you know the name of Taqrirat. Taqrirat means it is not written by the teacher it's written by students normally top students you know get permission then from the teacher to publish this for example ayatollah khui rahmatullah alayh has taqrirat of lectures of his teachers mirza Naini, for example in usul some people have taqrirat of ayatollah khui many people actually in fact usul there are many books published taqrirat of ayatollah khui or imam khomeini for example ayatollah subhani has taqrirat of his usul some people have taqrirat of his fiqh. So this is a common practice that a uh, very good student, everyone writes. Maybe everyone has for himself, you know, some taqrirat. But the good ones show to the teacher and teacher approves and says, you can publish this. And it would be in the name of the teacher. And also it is known who has done this. In any case, uh, because... Ayatollah Tehrani was a very great scholar and he was also very spiritual and respected by Allah Metabatabai. So we can trust what he attributes to Allah Metabatabai, although we cannot say this is word by word from Allah Metabatabai. But the ideas, the concepts are from him. And uh, this is also translated into English. Uh, I think, as far as I know, initially they were published in at Tawhid Journal, but then published as a book. And I found actually two translators, and I don't know whether both were done independently or uh, one of them also maybe was a compilation or you know a division of the first one. I didn't do that much research on that. Uh, what inshallah I am going to use is the original Farsi because I think that would be more accurate and uh, we don't need to go through the translation but translation is available uh, the link will be shared with you is in Al Islam org as well and you are of course uh, more than welcome to use the translation but we will inshallah try to follow the original text in Farsi Allah. Let me give you a little introduction to this to the discussions and content of the book, and then inshallah we start from the beginning of the book. 
there is, as I said, an introduction by Ayatollah Tehrani. And Ayatollah Tehrani starts with talking about innate desire or yearning in human beings for ghayb, for something beyond material world. Above all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it's not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Human beings by nature look for something deeper and beyond the material world. And they have in them inclinations towards something eternal, something enduring, etc. And then he says, therefore, Sarat mustaqim and the right path in human development is not to be restricted to zahir, to just the outward or external aspects. We need to have zahir and batin together. So the uh, outward and inward dimensions, not just outward dimension. For example, in ibadah. In ibadah, we should not be pleased with just bringing the actions. We need to go also into the meaning and to the remembrance of Allah and the presence of heart, etc. But it is not only ibadah. In many things, we have to go beyond the surface and find deeper layers of that. Then he says, Quran, the glorious Quran, invites us to reflect and to purify. We should not just read the Quran and recite, for example, the Quran or look at the world around us. We should ponder, we should reflect so we can go deeper. And also we should get engaged with purification, with tazkiyah to nafs. And then he mentions that when it comes to sciences also we should not be satisfied with just you know learning theories and terminology and concepts etc we should go deeper and try to get into the light which is available there the ma'rifah which is available there then he has a quotation from mullah sadra in Al Asfar, where Mullah Sadra, although he was always a very spiritual person, but there was a transformation in him. He became even more spiritual, more focused after some time. And he says that, you know, I used to get very much engaged in the conventional learnings, you know, seeing what every philosopher has said, you know, what he said about that, you know. Uh, comparing you know all these things you know but then he realized that he needs to go m deeper and he needs to be more focused he needs to work more on the Quran work more on the spirituality and you know how much spiritual was Mullah Sadra especially when he was sent into exile and he was in Kahak a village outside home now has become a small town about 30 kilometers away from Qom and his house is now there turned into a museum he used to do lots of ibadah there and whenever he had some issue he used to walk from there to the shrine of Lady Masuma so that he can understand then he says Akhund Mullah Hussein Quliya Hamadani was a great scholar who had gone deep not only in understanding all these Islamic sciences but also to reach haqiqah. He was very very spiritual and then he trained many many scholars who were great scholars in knowledge but also very spiritual and one of them was Sayyid Ahmad Tehrani Karbalai. And one student of Sayyid Ahmad Tehrani Karbalai was Sayyid Mirza Ali Aga Qazi Tabatabai, 
who was a great person. Alhamdulillah, we had about two lectures. We had two lectures about him in Muharram, the series on the helpers. And then one of the students of Sayyid Ali Qadi Tabatabai was Allama Tabatabai. Of course, he doesn't mention others, but you know Ayatollah, for example, Bahjat was another one. And there were many other great scholars. So, Akhun Mullah Hussein Quli Amadani is the beginning of a line of mystics that uh, Allama Tabatabai is the one that is very well known to us. And then he says Allama Tabatabai, who was very, very spiritual, but he focused in the last stage of his life more on the Quran, although he was always, you know, very spiritual and very much, you know, focused on the Quran, but even more. And he started Al-Mizan. And he, when he went to Qom, as you know, uh, he says himself that uh, I try to see what is more needed. Although he was a great mushtahid, he could teach, you know, fiqh, usul, rajal. Uh, but he found out that it's more needed to teach tafsir and philosophy and irfan, of course. Uh, anyway, he had great connection with the Quran. Then he says, uh, Ayatollah Mutahari also, who was very spiritual, you know, a person who was always doing tahajjud, etc. But he says towards end of his life, again, he paid more attention to the Quran and started, you know, having lectures on tafsir, etc. Uh, it seems that maybe this is a sign of maturity that people, when they master different sciences, they have lots of experience. Now they focus on the Quran. And maybe this is the way, because if you are not yet mature, you want to do, you know, some tafsir of the Quran might be too early. Uh, you know, sometimes some people, you know, ask me about translating Quran or, you know, working on Quran, etc. I say that should be your last, uh, you know, work. So after you do other work, you get experience, you learn, you, you know, become mature. Then you work on the Quran. I'm not saying you not wait till you become 70, 80 years old, but I'm saying when you really feel you are very mature. Anyway, this is his introduction. Uh, but the main discussion of the book that he says it's based on the teachings of Allah Tabatabai is after introduction. And one of the things that you should know you should know about this book is that some people <coughs> have rightly said that this book is somehow based on a book on Sayyid Suluk by the late Allami Bahrul Ulum because there is a book Sayyid Suluk attributed to Allami Bahrul Ulum and it seems that Allama Tabatabai, when he was giving these lectures, was referring to that book. But in that book, there are some issues that he didn't bring here. And also he had uh, uh, lots of other points to add. But there is a connection, there is a relation. And even uh, some people said that Allama had the idea that that Risale of Bahrul Rum is one of the best pieces on Sayyid Suluk. But we work on this one because this is more kind of uh, muhazzab, you know, it's a kind of more modified and more, you know, processed through the mind and heart and spirituality of Allama Tabatabai in addition to previous scholars like Bahrul Ulum and uh, some issues which were a little bit maybe problematic and also some people doubt whether they are from Bahrum or not anyway they are left aside so we focus on this one one of the beauties of this book is that it has lots of practical instructions in our 
previous uh, series, we got to know more about uh, history of Irfan and you know different aspects of Irfan and then even Esharat wa Tanbiha, the ninth section, although was about Irfan Amali, but it was not practical instructions. It is part of Irfan Amali because it was about Maqamatul Arifin. But there were not that much practical tips because everything has its own place and they don't mix up these things. This book, because it is Risale for Seyru Suluk, is an essay for wayfaring, therefore it has also practical instructions. For example, inshallah, uh, next week or maybe the week after, but hopefully next week, we will have discussion about Muraqaba which is very important or for example you know later you know we will have lots of you know instructions about you know zik, about how to get rid of you know uh, thoughts which are not helpful about for example silence about uh, you know loneliness many things about tahajjud um, so there are lots of inshallah practical discussion that would come bi'iznillah so Let's start with the very beginning of the book, inshallah. So, 